Good morning, y'all. It's Sunday morning. It's April 14th, and um, I'm Rachel. I'm gardening for butterflies and for myself on the Alabama Gulf Coast in zone 9A, and it is 59 degrees right now, and the roses are loving this weather. It has, we have been having some great temperatures. Um, it's gonna get up to 74 today. Uh, we had a kind of bad storm. They were saying we were gonna even have hail, but we didn't uh, end up having hail um, earlier in the week. So we got a lot of rain and um, I've been doing a lot of um, rearranging in the garden and having so many adventures. So I'm so excited to show them to you. So come along with me. I potted up some seedlings. Uh, I'm I have grown some globe basil. I'm probably not gonna leave it like this because it's looking, I don't know, maybe if the globe basil grows bigger, but right now it's just looking like a little bit much. But I, I put the globe basil in these little pots right here in between the salvia leucantha that I had planted. And I needed to uh, liberate more of my pots to put seedlings in. So I took all the uh, not all of them, but a bunch of petunias and pansies, and I just kind of planted them this way, uh, just in a line, just so I could get my pots available for more things. So I, I put them here thinking, well, you know, if the armadillos dig it up, then oh well, you know, I can't stop them. But so far, they haven't dug anything up, and, um, and I mulched everything. I've left some spaces open because I've got some seedlings coming up, and if the armadillos don't dig them up, I will have a bunch of vinca right here. And I threw out some seeds earlier, and I, I guess they all just bunched up in one place. So I've, I'm gonna have some more uh, forget-me-nots right here. That's a bunch of them. And I think they'll be the same as these right here back there. Aren't they looking lovely? Don't you love forget-me-nots? So pretty. So I hope that, that will, they'll get an opportunity to grow. And then I went ahead and put the bird bath back here again because I just can't keep water in it in the center of the gravel. Uh, it just gets too dry over there and I'm, I, just, I just don't manage it. So I've put some more things out here. This, I haven't even mentioned it, but this is salvia indigo spires. And it looks kind of weedy right now because it's just not blooming, but uh, it is about to bloom. You can see right there. So that's gonna be lovely. I mean, just let me show you this. The blooms will be about 20 inches long. They just get phenomenally long. And this thing has, looks like a monster, doesn't it? <laughs> I also put globe basil here and here. We'll see how that goes. And, and it gives it kind of a, a faux formality, you know, because it'll grow up round and it kind of just reminds me of, of uh, maybe a, uh, it reminds me of just kind of like a, a faux boxwood or topiary when it's round, you know, because you don't have to cut it or anything. It just grows round. That's what I love about globe basil and it smells good. And then it will have little white blossoms on it. Um, that are so sweet and that the pollinators love so much. So I'm gonna come through here. My um, clematis finally bloomed. I didn't even know what color it was gonna be. Look at this sweet little bloom. That is very exciting. I hope it will continue to live. I still need to put some string right there, but I am going to do it. And then I decided rather than trying to build something around the, the fountain. It just wasn't working for me because what I wanted to do mostly with this garden is I want to be able to see it from the window. And so I ended up doing this. I did this last year and I'm, I'm hoping I learned my lesson from last year, but I'm doing kind of like um, a border right here. And oh, I'm just loving all of these colors together. Last year, I, I did a double border and then it grew so much that I couldn't even walk through here. So I had it all lined up there. So I haven't decided what to do with everything here yet. I was thinking I would do kind of a double border, but right now I just wanna talk about all these pretties right here. Don't you love these colors together? Isn't it exciting and fun? Um, it just, 
has been making me so happy. Every time I look out the windows, uh, just to see all of these things, the hummingbirds have been loving it too. Um, so I was gonna tell you what I have here. Um, this is indigo spires salvia, and then just um, petunias. This is licorice plant, which I'm just loving. I love looking at it from the top down. Don't you love the colors and, and the fun and the shapes? And I'm really enjoying them. I put both of them in pots like this because I just think that color together with the licorice plant is so beautiful. And then um, I think this is super bells. They're little. And then this is Pinta. And this is Diamond Frost Euphorbia. That's the Wasabi Coleus. This is that um, mullet, I mean, millet. <laughs> I always want to call it mullet. Millet, millet grass that I started from seed. And then Salvia Lacantha. And that's a Salvia Magenta something. And I've only got one of these um, Artemisia. But you know what I saw in a book, and I can't remember if it was Penelope Hophouse or Rosemary Very, who was telling how to take cuttings of this. So I'm hoping that I can make more of them and always have them next year. But um, pansies right here until they go over and gum freena seedling in the back right there. And then Salvia Lucantha. Don't you love the floaty fun of this? Uh, this is Queen of Sweden Roses. Don't you just love those colors together? That is just, oh, so gorgeous. And you just have to kind of imagine, because everything is small right now. It's all gonna grow big, and this millet is gonna be burgundy when it, when it grows up, and it's gonna grow up about three or four feet tall. So then I just echoed everything the same here as it is over there just to keep the colors and the textures together. One small difference on this end of the border is that I've got the Gertrude Jekyll rose here at the end and isn't it looking so pretty with that salvia? I'm loving it. Let's bring it together so you can see just just the pretty prettiness. Everything's covered in dew this morning and it's just got a kind of glow to it. All my little birdie people are just like, why are you out here pestering us? We want to eat our breakfast. Um, I just saw a female cardinal and uh, she, she <laughs> startled her when I turned around and she flew away. I got something really cool uh, from Beach Blossoms yesterday. I just stopped by there. This, I think it's called Patio Baby. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, look at this darlingness. It is an eggplant and it's supposed to be, let's just show you the tag so we can see what it is. Yeah, patio baby eggplant. I'm really enjoying the colors of the blossoms and just the, the and the colors of the leaves too. That is just so pretty. I haven't had a chance even to pot it up yet, but this is just gonna go so well in the garden. Oh. Isn't that just so fun? So I'm gonna pot that up. I mean that color. In fact, let's put it. Let's put it over here. Let's see. Let's just put it right here with the. Yeah, I don't know where I'm gonna stick this, but that looks so good with everything else. My dahlia, my surprise dahlia, is opening up, um, and I'm not sure which one this is, and I should have cut out the center thing because uh, you're supposed to but I just I just didn't I'm, I'm not a good Dahlia uh, parent <laughs> oh you know what in fact that reminds me I have another surprise Dahlia that's coming up and um, I need to go show it to you because it was in a pot with grass in it and it's gotten huge like overnight so let me show it to you really quick. And there are just a bunch of jewels of opar that have seeded themselves in here, which I'm enjoying. But here it is, right here. Wow. And I don't know what that one's going to be either. So, so many fun surprises. And I just got to show you, Gertrude Jekyll is the biggest rose that I have in the garden. 
just look how massive that is. I don't know if that's four or five inches wide, but, and she smells incredible. The California Dreamin' Rose is about to um, bloom again. It has no scent, but it's my husband's favorite rose. This is the view from the guest bedroom kind of area. And I wanted to video from right here because I thought, well, maybe it would make a little more sense when, with the colors and things. You have to really imagine everything two or three times bigger than it is right now because uh, that's why there's so much space uh, for activities. But um, yeah, I'm gonna be plugging more things in here because I have a ton of seedlings. And y'all, I'm so excited. I have a problem that I've never had before. Um, I have more seedlings than I know what to do with because usually I don't, um, I have not been good with uh, seeds at all. Um, I'm gonna show you my seedlings in just a second. I heard a hummingbird just now. I was hoping that he would um, come over here and, and try to drink from something while we were just right here. But uh, another thing that, you know, I, I don't like red in the garden, but you see this rose right here. Now it's, it's hot pink. Sometimes it seems to translate red. What will happen with this rose is I will look at it across the garden. I'll be like, oh girl, mm -mm. girl, you look red. And she's like, no, uh -uh, no, I'm pink. I really am. Come and look at me a little closer. And I'm like, yeah, it's true. Yeah, you're pink, but girl, sometimes you're a little too hot. And she's like, no, 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 that's not, that's not it. I'm, I'm just, I'm hot pink. But look, you can compare her to this snapdragon right here. And it's like her outer petals are really red looking. And you can, so you can see the difference right here. So I probably need to move this snapdragon because the snapdragon is like, nope, nope, she's red. She is, don't let her fool you. <laughs> Something else that I have weird and is new to me for the first time, and I got it, it's supposed to be called, it, or it is called Blue Salvia. I'm waiting for it to bloom. Oh, look, there's a creepy bug on it. Um, but see this weird bloom right here? Uh, of course it hasn't opened up, but these leaves are so weird. Now, the texture of them, and you know salvia and sage, I think they're the same thing. But so this is a very sage looking texture to me but look how huge the leaves are and the weird shape of them and it's just a weird plant that I'm I'm enjoying it but I'm just like what is it doing what is it even doing you know it's just it's just massive and I don't know how big it's gonna grow so that is a fun experiment keep coming over to the carry care orange tree and I'm just so disappointed in myself for not uh, saving that giant swallowtail caterpillar i thought oh i'm just gonna let him just let nature just do the thing and he's just gonna live and he was getting bigger and bigger and he is gone he got eaten and uh so i of course now am going around looking for them i'm going to save all of them because i want all the butterflies i finally got a got to put up mm, pot up mm, my all my seedlings and it's way more than I ever, ever expected that I would get. Just, I'm so thankful. I'm just so thankful. And I hope that, and it's giving me hope for the future of growing my, you know, other things that I've always wanted and that you can't find in nurseries. And I'm thrilled to get an opportunity to have so many plants and even some to give away. And I hope I can just uh, manage to keep them going. But um, some things that are exciting that I don't know what they even look like when they're growing except from pictures in magazines is uh, this right here, that is verbascum. And then these are hollyhocks. They're a different kind of hollyhock. And so far, they haven't gotten rust on them. Uh, these are the kind that I think should do well in a humid environment. This verbascum, see how big it is? So it's just, it's like growing out rather than up. And this is, and I guess maybe it has to make a very strong base because it's supposed to grow up really tall. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to see how that goes.
and this these Cleom, they came in a package that had white, pink, and purple uh, flowers. So I'm there's no way I would even plant those out until I knew what color they were anyway. But I'm when they get bigger, I'm gonna put them in bigger pots and just bigger pots. I'm I don't I'm not putting them in the ground. My friend Joe gave me some seeds and they were for native plants. And it turns out that a lot of, well, in my experience, because I thought the entire tray had died, but it just took them a lot longer to germinate uh, the native plants. So here's something super -de duper cool. This is pipe vine and I can't re read my own tag. I don't even know what that says. It's something pipe vine, but um, here, they are, uh, I just potted them up bigger here, so I hope that they will just take off. That is thrilling. Um, I, I already have some pipe vine. I don't think this is the same kind. I don't know, because I never saw that from a seedling. I bought it already grown. And Joe also gave me pink salvia seeds, so I have no idea what these are gonna look like. So I'm, I'm really excited about that and milkweed seeds and I've got this is a milkweed right here this also is thrilling because it's Gulf Coast Pinstamen there's a little thing GC Pinstamen um and I have five or six of them uh and Joe has been growing them and she has been loving them they've been like something that loves to live here you know it's got Gulf Coast in the name so it should be loving it here but, oh, I popped out the tops of these um, basil right here. It's cardinal basil. They, they did look bigger and stuff, but you know what? It was just looking too floppy, and I wanted it to get bushier. So that's why they're kind of, kind of sad looking right now. This viburnum, and all I know is that it's viburnum. I didn't write down the rest of it, but look at that. Oh, why won't not? That's annoying. It needs to, why can't it? Ugh, there, okay, gorgeous. I'm just hoping this viburnum will grow big and thick and happy right now. It's about five feet tall and not super thick, but you know what, it's, it's gonna, it's making it. These milkweed just happen to grow from seed in this pot and I'm letting them grow, but you can see how little they are. Everything has grown pretty slowly and I'm guessing it's because it's been chillier than normal, but I've only seen one monarch and not even in my own garden and I'm thankful because I do not have enough milkweed for them at all right now. Now this is arrowwood viburnum and it's got little uh, buds on it that have not opened up yet. Uh, I don't even I don't even know what they're gonna look like. I guess I'm guessing they're gonna be kind of like that other viburnum. But this one is very tall, very vigorous, and happy. It looks like it's about six and a half feet tall. Uh, I like that so much. I got that at Kim's Nursery. In fact, I got all the little kind of bushes and shrubs in this area at Kim's Nursery. It's, uh, hopefully it'll fill in. I, if you can just envision everything growing up tall and thick and, and shutting out this fence. And on this fence, we're gonna have morning glories. This fence from the other direction, my neighbor was so kind to let me plant all these salvias and blue-eyed grass and I need to mulch right here so that it will look better and prettier, but it's all gonna grow up super tall and thick and attract butterflies and hummingbirds, and it's just gonna make a, a salvia forest here also. Oh, in the bog garden, the Venus flytrap has bloomed even more. Look at this darling, darling little bouquet of buds. Aren't they sweet? I can't wait for there to be color in the bog garden because so many of these things are gonna have colorful flowers. There are gonna be yellow flowers on this and this right here, I really couldn't even tell you what that's gonna look like. I don't know. I think it's purple, purple flowers. 
and then this grass right here it'll have a yellow flower so and they're it's gonna be yellow and purple I know that for sure even though I hate betony I mean I do I, I hate it because it just it's just too it does too well and you know what it's not even translating well but this is a pale pink betony flower I wish it looks white right there but it's 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 more palish uh, orchid but there are betony flowers all in here and they are looking sweet um, they're making it not look so weird and icky but this is the back side of what's going to be the salvia forest and I, I mulched a little path again right here hopefully hopefully it wasn't the wrong thing to do to keep the hydrangeas in here they're still looking like little sticks one of the reasons that I love kale and I think you'll be able to see it from just looking at the backside here because uh, there's one there there's one there they just bring a beautiful architectural punctuation of like a gray blue color um, they 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 don't take over but they just add so much beauty uh, that's, and now that I'm looking at it I'm thinking hmm I might need to stretch those out a little bit because see how there's just a clump three there and there's one over here I might need to bring one over here to to bring some more of that color here I put a grass in that I'd had in a pot and I don't know if it's gonna make it or not because I was thinking if that grew then that would fill in the space but it doesn't look super happy or even alive let's look at it Oh, it's got one little sprig. Hmm. I don't know if that's going to go or not. This is an area where my darling little toad was that I discovered that I can't wait to share with y'all. Um, he is so cute. I've got to make him a little toad house and not go stomping through here because I sure don't want to hurt him. Um, he is he is so chunky and big. But here is the backside of this border. I. I you just need to, I've got to give things more space. I always get too crazy and I crunch things too close together and then I'm not able to undo it. So right now I'm trying to remember that things are gonna get huge. I wish I could remember how long I've had these Queen of Sweden roses. I'm, I'm thinking this is their second year, but it could be their third. But look at all the buds on it. I am over the moon to have Queen of Sweden Roses. I gotta tell you, ever since the very first time I ever saw it in a magazine, I just never, never knew that I would be able to have this. It, it just seemed like a dream. So, roses, oh, they're, you can have roses on the Gulf Coast. Who knew? There is one disappointing thing about a Queen of Sweden rose. It just, it doesn't have a scent. Um, that's, that's the one thing, but the perfection, the just, I'm swooning. Oh, Gertrude Jekyll though makes up for it um, as huge as it is. And it's, it's got a gorgeous scent and it's also perfect um, and beautiful. And uh, so, yeah. So I'm, I'm thankful that I have those two together. I've got something to feast on with my eyes and then I can just soak up that scent. But these colors, y'all, yes. Since these colors are just doing it for me so much. And over here, these those same colors are gonna really pop out here when these things come up because a lot of the stuff I'm still waiting on it to bloom and it's gonna get bigger you just you just have to just imagine it oh this is why I came over here because I wanted to show you this I, I put these two seedlings in here and look how much bigger they are from the ones that I have in the pots over the seedlings over in the pots so I don't know how big these things are gonna get they're looking pretty healthy and happy and I guess they might end up um, overshadowing this thing. Um, I think this is Mexican heather right here. Um, but yeah, 
uh, their leaves are massive. Well, let me just show you. Okay, so that's my, yeah, five inches wide, possibly. Yeah, so hollyhocks, and I think they're gonna be like a pale pink. This popcorn senna, I see that it's got a bunch of holes in it, which is cool, because that means it could have some caterpillars on it, butterfly caterpillars, because this is a larval host plant for the senna butterfly, which is like a yellow butterfly. And, and this is the crazy thing about this plant. It truly does smell like popcorn. It just, it, it's so bizarre. You would not expect that it would smell like popcorn and then it has little popcorny looking things on it. I'm on the hunt for pipe vine, swallowtail, eggs, or caterpillars. This is my Dutchman's pipe vine, and it's looking pretty happy. It's getting all up in the orange tree. I hope that's not gonna hurt it. But uh, I haven't seen any any caterpillars, although whenever I see holes in leaves, that's when that's when I look. But it could be anything, because I know we've got we've got army worms right now. But uh yeah. There are a bunch of seedlings growing in the gravel garden that may or may not make it. The I have just not decided what to do with this. I've got these salvias that are gonna grow massive. Um, and then zinnias that just happen to grow up in these little pots. Um, and then the salvia leucantha that got big last year, I don't know if they'll be shaded out by these others in these pots, we'll see. But um, there, the maidenhair fern, the errant, little piece that broke off of one and I stuffed right there. Look at how gorgeous it is because no one's doing anything to it and no one's noticing it and, and it's just so happy. This lavender is even blooming. It's uh, a miracle. I keep it out here because I never, I don't water out here at all and I've decided I'm just, I don't want to do it. I don't, I just want to let this grow wild and crazy. So I have a bunch of passion flower vine already coming up in the low stages um, and I have a lot of seedlings coming up through here and this area just is going to get crazy but mostly with passion flower vine so when they start I'll, I'll just get my little little uh, trellises and plunk them in anywhere where there seems to be a massive chunk of them and I'll let the flowers grow up between them but this is mainly, this is for the Gulf Fritillaries. I just, I want them to have this massive area. Plus, I, I like to have privacy on my screen and porch, and it's really the cheapest, fastest way to do it is to let the uh, vines grow up. But you can see, these hydrangeas don't look good either. This it just don't. I have a surprise amaryllis coming up. Um, this is, must have been planted by someone who lived here before me, because I would just not plant this but here it is the duranta that had grown in a pot until it was four feet tall uh i planted that here last year and then it froze and i cut it all the way back down to the ground and it's coming back um i love that color i love duranta but you know it is disappointing when it can't make it through a freeze and this beautyberry bush this was planted by a bird i guess um in my yard and i always wanted one it has, uh, it's huge now. I'm really liking it because it gives me a little bit of privacy from the front uh, porch. And it looks like it must be eight or nine feet wide. And behind it is a Confederate rose that was also planted by a deer or a bird or something like that. But I love it when God gardens for me. Thank you, God. That is just, it's so incredible. I went back to my orange tree and looked for my giant swallowtail caterpillar and it was gone. It had been snacked on, so uh, that made me more concerned for my um, eastern black swallowtail caterpillars and this is one of them. And so I'm gonna bring some of these in and I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's gonna be hard for me to cut it down, so I'm gonna just show you. I'm gonna go down here to where this is attached right there and I'm gonna cut it right there. Here, I've cut off a section of it with the caterpillar already on it. And I've got a little glass with water in it and I've taped over half of it. Oh, here. So 
I'm gonna stuff all the um, fennel in there in the side part so and I've taped it so that the caterpillars if they fall they won't fall into the water okay so I think I have six caterpillars here for eastern black swallowtail um, butterflies uh, ranging from medium-sized here to very very tiny in fact you probably can't even see it see that little dot right there right there yeah I've got a large size critter keeper and you can get these from Amazon or um, Walmart uh, I got mine from Al's Five and Dime in Orange Beach but um, I've put it on its side so that I can fit all of the caterpillars and the fennel uh, right side up and I'm just going to put the top on it and keep putting in more fennel whenever they need it. On Monday I collected these Eastern Black Swallowtail caterpillars um, and today is Saturday and see how big this caterpillar is now? It is almost big enough to turn into a chrysalis and I have another one in here that's almost big enough right here. I put some sticks in this container so that they can form chrysalises on the sticks rather than on the side of the container. But you can see I've, I've found some other ones and uh, let's see if that'll let me zoom in. Um, they, yeah, so cute. Um, so I think I've probably got maybe about nine of them in here. Um, so I added some more fennel. They love fennel. I've, I've discovered that I think they like fennel more than anything else. That's what I have the most luck with for the Eastern Black Swallowtail Butterfly Caterpillars. I'm just going to show you how small this one is. And it, it isn't even at the smallest stage, but within a week it will be as big as these really big ones. Really big fatties. I have spotted a little lizard. I don't know if you can see him or not. Let's see if I can zoom in on him. Oh, there he goes. Oh, him's just running away. This is the pretty little flower of betony. And um, I treat it like a weed because it it's annoying. And I yank it up all the time, but look at the lovely little flower. And I'm sure all the little critters enjoy it. Isn't this frilly little pansy exquisite? Just gorgeous. This is also a little frilly uh, pansy that I grew from seed and I threw it in this pot and then I planted a grass in here, hoping that it would get big. But look at this crazy thing. I think this is a dahlia. So now I've got a dahlia coming up. I didn't even know, so yay. That's exciting. Pansies, grass, dahlias, who knows? This is Gertrude Jekyll about to burst forth and it is gonna be phenomenal. I'm letting it stay right there between the pickets because I can't wait to see it with these cosmos. Look at this beauty of a lizard. And I can't remember what kind he is. But isn't he? Oh, you know what? He's some sort of fence lizard. Let's see if he can. Oh. Desdemona buds. Desdemona bloom first opened. It's got that pink. And then after it's been open for a while, it has a little bit of a golden center. This Desdemona has been phenomenal this year. Just the best ever. And you know what? I'm not sure how many years I've had it. Maybe this is the third year I've had it. Maybe it's only the second, but I think it's the third. But just, it's just really putting on a show this year. These are betony roots. They are edible. This is the, um, I showed you the flower earlier. And these are, uh, edible. They taste kind of like water chestnuts. They're crunchy. The 
come out as bloomed. The Queen of Sweden has got so many blooms on it. Three, four, five, they're open, and then so many buds to go. This is the prettiest she has looked in forever, forever. <laughs> the perfection that is Gertrude Jekyll, and she smells as beautiful as she looks. Emily Bronte. James Galway. Queen of Sweden. Gentle Hermione. A beautiful green dragonfly has come to rest on the seeds. I'm afraid what happened to the dragonfly is probably he went into the potting shed and then couldn't get out. I'm going to see if I can encourage him to fly away. Oh, maybe he won't. I'm hoping that he's alright because he started to struggle a little bit. And this is Beach Bloom's hours right here in case you want to come down and get some goodies. You see this caterpillar right here? This is an army worm. It is bad, bad, bad. There is no reason. Oh. I hope you have some chickens to feed it to because I actually have a friend who's got chickens. I'm going to save it and let them have a happy, happy protein snack. Yo, I was looking for... Um, army worms to feed my friend's chickens and look what I found a giant toad look how handsome he is wow him's a big one and look he's got the cutest little home it's just right here in this little hole I'm gonna have to get a toad house I've heard that you can take a pot uh, that's kind of broken on one side and put it out upside down and toads will live in it so we gotta make a toad house. These jewels of Opar flowers are just so dainty and lovely in the evening sun. It's hard to pick them up uh, on camera because they're so tiny, but butterflies and hummingbirds will drink from them. And they're a native plant. They say that their leaves are edible. I haven't tried them and we should uh, look that up. But, um, these started out from just one little seedling that I got from my friend Carol, and they've self-seeded like all over the garden. 
and I, I just love letting them grow here. Well, the spring has been a little slow going as far as um, the growth rate for things, but God is making it happen. They're growing. He is bringing sun and rain and um, everything that they need. And they're just, they're, they are gonna, it's gonna grow. It's gonna happen. <laughs> but um, I hope everything's going well for you and your gardens. I hope y'all are having adventures and growing interesting things and finding new stuff that you've never grown before. And uh, I can't wait to find out what y'all are doing. God bless y'all. Y'all have an awesome week and y'all let's play outside. Talk to you later. Bye.